Video games have evolved a ton in a rather short time. The big elites of the gaming lands are all sitting amongst their thrones as literal genres in this day and age. Link, Samus, Snake, and the Doom Slayer all have many protagonists just like them. So many, in fact, that the genres have begun to give each other bedroom eyes as their formulas have been mixed and intermingled with many a different type of game. Roguelikes, horde slashers, and even the addition and subtraction of the Z-axis. These protagonists have seen all kinds of changes and shape shifts to their adventure type, that their kits are nearly cartoonish in size for such dark and dire times. Simplicity was what made these people legendary amongst the gamer space in the beginning. If A didn't do it, B didn't do it. Ain't no L and R to fall back on. This controller only got to it. Okay, so maybe advancements moved a bit faster. Aside from Kid, these protags of Samus's name have always remained silent and stoic within said silence. Knowing that as long as they keep that stoicism, stubbornity, they just might be able to make it through this adventure, even if it takes bashing one's head through brick and mortar. But I feel like I keep getting cut off. So back in the college times, I was buying games at home before I was subjected to the horrid hi-fi conditions of uni once more. This title followed me through several emotive breaks before I just decided, fuck it, let's binge. Wi-Fi at the Holiday Inn, that was my dorm room was slipshod, so we couldn't play Splatty 2, and we had to share a room with a tiger. So taking over the one TV in the room made us feel a little self-conscious if what's happening on screen is to save me for. So I played the game on and off while shuffling other titles until one night, I hit the apex of the plot while in a drunken stupor. The sights on screen prompting me to place the bottle of Jameson I was nursing down and play more intently at the foot of my bed with a glass of water next to the bottle. My roommate awaking from his nap to see me fighting my protagonist therapist in an epic battle that kept both of us up. Yeah, at least until he passed out again because it was Saturday night and again, we're in college. Way... So Good, I know, please stop doing that. You want the effects or not? Fine, that was boring, go ahead. Thought so. Sep all, I'ma pop in whenever there's secrets abound. Ta. Well, okay then. The game is made simple so as to make the player focus on the story, even if they happen to be in a drunken stupid. Analog or D-pad works for movement, but TBH analog is best for how attacking works here. You move, b-hop, and slash for most of your time here. Don't mind my blade. Me and Blueby here unlocked a bunch of secret swords that change things up a bit more. Your slash is omnidirectional and acts as a second jump. Any normal goons who slash will spell their demise. However, find the distance a bit too vast and the enemy weapon to be a gun, you can actually turn the tides. Our hero is able to slow time to a near crawl in a pinch, which gives us, the player, the reaction time to react to bullets by reflecting them back at assailants with a slash. Or you could be like Plague Coffee and make your first run a challenge where you specifically don't slow time. Never. Blake's really good at video games. Should a pinch turn into a ticket punch, no worries. It was all a dream! This was all in your head, as every mission takes place in the precognition of our hero named Zero. So any deaths we incur will be merely really, really, really bad daydreams of Zero that are nigh infinite in their failures. One can't really imagine what goes through the head of Zero as his brain has been rewired so that we can literally see his John Wick-esque scenarios in slow-mo and real time. Just about every mission will be played back to you via security cameras that follow the action in real time. So the 10 minutes you spent in slow-mo across this level disappears as you're shown Bob weaving round at the speed of sound, making actions and reactions that give you a nice little taste of imposter syndrome as you stare at the repeating footage and see your speed run level execution. Meanwhile, you can barely get past Theseus and Hades. As you go about any dialogue in game, you better keep on your toes as you're given a window of response time. Don't, don't be too hasty though, as not every dialogue option is a good QTE. You can be rude, rush people, deny conversation, and even piss people off. 
all of which can cause slight changes to your story path towards the end and in the middle of the story. Secrets and unlockables can be triggered and collected as you go about being the nicest or rudest merc in your immediate area. Some as small as a snappy response for being a rude ass, and some as big as different weapons or even hidden fights. Wink. So now that we've gone over how all this crap works, let's get into the story of Zero so I can actually refer to him by name. Hey, you wrote the script, hun. That's on you. Let's begin. That scene is a tutorial for how attacking works that lovingly tells you that Zero here is bullet resistant. This scene will follow through and inhibit you to the base blade and time stop, which is different because instead of a crawl, everything stops. So speedrunners don't tense up too much. Run's about to begin and you already did the joke. Any blade changes will take place immediately once the level begins proper. Okay, let's get to work. Before we enter, scale this wall here and loot the corpse. That key may look strange and colorful, but it's important. Trust me. Just before entry, you get a call from your employer, ensuring that you know the lowdown on how this is supposed to go. Being rude to him and hanging up is part of the secret ending for later, but it requires a lot of work, so expect me to mention it a lot. Hang up on him five times. A poor title card gets slashed in half and we're pulling our Walkman out to play some jams for the mission. Running through the factory quickly educates one on just how deadly the player is and equally how brittle. Goons will be taken down in a single hit, but some can be equipped with weapons to clash with your sword. This gives you a bit of recovery time, but puts them on their knees, allowing for a swift execution. Getting to the target location is easy peasy. The HVP gets his head blown off saw style by some Russian dude who sends guards in to deal with me, warning them about the laser grid. They didn't listen very well. The employers are a little pissy with Blue Bomber for recreating a successful saw trap. But we're told to rest easy. So I sip my herbal tea, turn on my TV as white noise to stave off any lingering nightmares. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It doesn't work out too well. The next day I head to my therapist, who also turns out to be my handler. Wait. So I go to my handler to debrief, make sense of my nightmares coming back, and receive my medicine dosage before I head off to the next assignment. At every therapy sesh, just be rude and demand your drugs. Then examine his desk and leave. This is proper rude behavior. Each night from this day forward, we receive a dossier to read and memorize. You don't actually have to if you don't want. The game's linear, and you only have one target in every level. Study up and burn it away before we head off to the mark. Upon entry to the hotel, I saunter up to the counter and have the option to wax anime with the concierge. Play this interaction normal, and you'll make a friend. However, spinning tops provokes her to hit on you, and the Pinkachu cosplay is goofy and friend-like as well. This combo getting flubbed is actually really difficult since she wants you, but biffing this and pissing her off is part of the secret fight. Passing the desk begins the mission. Through stairs, am I right? <laughs> yeah, so remember when I said fuck stairs? Spooking the elevator goons doesn't really alert the building all that much. Odd. 
As you go about the scenes, you may find items to pick up in heat. These also kill on contact. Oh hey, two of them are talking to each other. Hey, so uh, who do you think would win in a fight? The dragon or Strong Carry? Kidding me? Strong Carry doesn't skip the white thing. All these cheap don't. Yeah, but the dragon can dismember a dozen fully armed men with just a sword. For the boss to have been told we're coming, place seems pretty relaxed whenever I pop up. Even as we get to the top of this place, goons are still startled at my presence. Reaching the mark, we stop the tape. I understand why you're here. I'm not giving you the satisfaction of killing me. No, you're not who I was expecting. Surprises more than one of you left. Nope. Scat. Well, jab's done. If you finish this final scene with a throwable and toss it at him before you actually walk up to him, loot his body and take his master key. The high rule won't miss it. Upon returning to the counter, blood soaked, your new friend will vouch for you, using whatever response you gave her for your cosplay when the cop coils you. When you leave, she'll address you by either one of the anime characters you chose, or she'll give you a pet name, solidifying that yes, she likes you, and she wants you. Back at the apartment complex, a rude kid bumps into me. Apparently she's my neighbor. No, not that one. She tried to chat, I brush her off. She goes home, I go home. Tea, bed. I got shot. Next day, I go to my therapist to translate the windings. Dr. Dome is screaming at me before he got clapped. And before I got clocked, these dreams could possibly be rooted in an injury we received back in during the war days. Hence the meds and an apparent distortion of time we've been having. Not entirely sure what he means by that, I haven't really mentioned it. I told him that I met a child in my district of all places and he was just as shocked as I was since, you know, I live there. Not really a safe place if you ask him to get in the file and off I go once more. We gotta mix a DJ tonight. Beat rocking across the dance floor out of view of the guards leads us to our first scene. Hey, you're not supposed to be here. Turn around now or we're gonna have a problem. That's it, buddy. You asked for it. Eh, I knew I'd win against them. This club's back rooms are a bit more intricate than I thought. Getting from the dance floor to the show booth actually took real effort instead of just being a breeze to slash through, especially with the turrets that were all over the back. Failing the first turret interaction three times prompts a call from your handler about rolling in slow-mo. Tell him you don't need his help. It's a good thing the music is drum-piercingly loud, cause nobody's freaked out at all the gunfire I've shaken off. Which is the slender, the council of skinny ribbons has made a decision regarding your membership. You gonna make me a new member? You've turned your beast mane into a powerful hairstyle. The Pompadour. You will survive the trial by fire, Grace Riders. However, I'm afraid that you cannot join us. Aw, oh, man! You cannot join us until you shotgun his beer. Ah, you guys, you totally got me. A splendid performance that would make our forefathers proud. No longer shall you be slender witchy. 
from now on, you're sticky with me. Alright! I can't wait to tell Strong Terry all about this! Hmm. You're gonna be able to tell Terry all about it, sweetie. Just before I head in, do not talk to Electrohead. Where? Do not talk to. I. Right, you don't need to yell at me. Just hang up on him. You know the troll by this point. I burst through the door and he asks if I'm real. Are, are you uh, real? Fucks with people today. Be like someone to kill out. Like, uh Going against orders and letting default word vomit his voice box prompts dialogue about a drug he found in a storage unit that he won at an auction. It's had him tripping out since he took it. You can either tell him you'll let him go if you get the drugs, or you decide to that that's enough throwing info out of him. Because he knows fuck all and took the wrong shit from the wrong place. Before you can cut a deal or him, headshot. he gets headshot though. Alright, fuck pretenses. I shook my tail. Now it's time for heads to roll. The employers are happy we stayed Twitch compliant by changing the stream tags for the party before we left. I got grilled by that kid from earlier until I eventually let her look for some dumb toy that apparently just showed up under my apartment couch. Guessing her parent was the previous tenant or something? I don't know. T. Flop. Night. Flop. So at therapy, the man answers and tells him you spoke to Electro. Proceed to grill the handler for info and claim that you don't want this drug in your system anymore. No matter how much he gaslights and guilt trips you. My handler congratulates me on not speaking to Electrohead since he's a known plug. My handler also lets his apathy for drug usage slip. Kinda ironic considering the fact that him and Electrohead do the same thing, said Andy has a license for this crap and... Electrohead as a squad of bodyguards and guns. Well, time for the next hit. The next target is a prisoner at Mutual Nil, and I'm tasked with being utterly silent in this endeavor. No cops can meet my blade since this isn't a fully corrupt place. What the? Fire you on. 
His body's still warm. Somebody's already been here. Dragon, we have you surrounded. Surrender now, or we will respond with maximum force. Puppers brought the whole pack. Let's hope that all that Assassin's Creed can help here. Fuck. That. Scat. Fun as it would have been to just go no rushing on the place, my employers line my pockets more when I'm a good mouse. Papa needs his medicine. How about all that? I killed six Cromag bastards in the war. Interesting. I gave my fucking leg in the war and you just walked. I served too. What, with the Cro-Mags? You look like a fucking Cro-Mag. I killed your family, bitch. Why don't we let your people in the new Mecca? Fuck the Cro-Mags. Fuck you all. Get the uh, fuck out of new Mecca. We should have killed all your choices. Don't matter here. Help! Help! Somebody help me! His life is forfeit. Hmm? This is mine now. The kid from before seems to have been given a VHS tape. I'm surprised she believed him when he told her it was a movie. There's no label on it. She said it was from a guy that had dumb... hair. Oh, fuzz. Escaping the facility like Bluebee did gets you the prototype key. However, giving into your bloodlust and using the faster method will of course get you chewed out by your hand like wing. Oh, wing. Oh. So... Can I watch the movie with you? No, I don't think this is a movie for pups. Mm, Listen here, crotch gabo. I don't know what's on this thing, and being honest, the man who gave you this is very bad, and even though you bother me, I would rend this city asunder if he did anything to you. Wow. Um, Go home. Going. The hell's this tape? Nah, I'm talking about model trains, dude. Think about what they'd add to the apartment. What about model dinosaurs? Think about it, dude. Chugging along, picking up passengers, like. You know what I mean? I need another hit. Don't bogart the bongo, bruh. Shit. What if it's the cops? What if it's the pizza guy? Whoa. Let me take that hit first. Nice. What the fuck, man? I heard there's a party going on in here. Who wants to fucking party? Hey, look, do we? Uh I guess I party a little too hard for him, man. How about you, huh? You like to party? There's an alternate scene where you stop the tape as soon as Blue Bomber decides to give the neighbor a paw trimming, and you promptly tell her to get out. What is this shit you see? I can hear it from my fucking limo. You guys got any hard base? Stop. Oh no, your friend tapped out her. You and me, we're just getting started. Here, I've got a gift for you. Progress. I'd ask you to let me know what you think, but the last guys never did talk again after. Time sure did crawl for the low. Do you feel it? Hold still. Such a party animal after all. 
then maybe you shouldn't place music so fucking loud all the time. I'm sorry. Hey, it's not me. You should apologize to. It's your neighbor. You know that guy's a serial killer? One of the greatest. A living fucking legend, man. <laughs> he can't get a wink of sleep because of you, scum. So I'm here to take out the trash. Hold still. Well, that explains why I didn't hear them on the way up here. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Therapy time! Huh? All appointments move to tomorrow. Well, guess that's when I'm gonna come back. On my way back home, I see our demented fan cam in his limo. He tried to get me to do coke, and I tell him to take both it and his demented fan cam he weighs, roll him up nice and as tight as he can, and jam him up his dick. He tried to bribe me with more drugs and the promise of wanton murder, so I call him out like the demented subhuman piece of trash he is. See, I'm a serial killer, but I'm contracted. And the fuckers I off have done piles upon piles of bad shit for a paycheck. The thought pockets in their car only made the bad decision of taking your payment since their service is in and you busting their heads, not a nut. So he kicked me out for saying that and I tracked down the limo. It wasn't hard since he was the only Russian dude in town decked in black and gold with blue hair whipping it in an all white Hummer limo. Oh shit, did you follow me? Did I follow you? You ain't hard to spot. You fucked up, boy. Did I now? What the hell? <laughs> I can reflect bullets at point blank, but a shove can still stop. Shouldn't have shot my personal trainer. Did Blue Boy skip cardio for too long? Scat, he's a con. Hmm. Alright, so um my computer is starting to struggle with this project as it is absolutely massive. So uh that's gonna have to end off part one of this video like comment and share and i'm not gonna do all of those weird youtuber things that make you go oh man i gotta tell other people about this video so many makes part two <laughs> no I'm, I'm making part two this is i'm making part two just stick around so that you don't miss part two because a lot more stuff happens in parts two and three